Grassley, Ranking Member Feinstein, and um, my thanks to all the witnesses, uh, to Mr. Brandon, Mr. Bowditch, Dr. Alathari, and um, to other federal law enforcement uh, agencies and entities, DEA, Marshals. Uh, my hometown of Wilmington, Delaware, has suffered through an epidemic of gun violence, uh, and we are grateful for the assistance we've gotten from federal law enforcement as we try and work federal, state, local to really tackle gun violence in my hometown. Um, I'm also grateful uh, to witnesses that will join us here on the third panel, Catherine Posada and Ryan Petty uh, from Parkland, Florida, uh, and to the young people, um, the teachers, the faculty, um, the students uh, all over the country who are raising their voices uh, even now. Um, I've heard that high schools all up and down my state, middle schools, elementary schools, have walked out this morning to demand action by all of us in Congress. From Claymont Elementary School to P.S. DuPont Middle School to Concord High School, from Caesar Rodney to Dover, Middletown to Newark, Salesianum to St. Mark's, we have dozens and dozens of schools across my small state where students are walking out to get our attention. They're asking the adults to be the adults and to solve this problem. So uh, I'm grateful for their work, but I'm also I'm gravely concerned that we don't seem to be able to come together on proposals that have a reasonable chance of being enacted here. Uh, in February alone, five individuals under 21 were shot in my hometown, um, and these are not the subject of national uh, exposés or great focus either in the New York Times or on ABC News. And it's just a reminder that in small cities and large cities and rural communities and in urban communities across our country, week in and week out, gun violence takes lives. Gun violence makes our nation uh, one of the most violent, one of the most lethal uh, on earth. And there are things we can do together to address it. Um, I was uh, grateful that Senator Toomey of Pennsylvania, my neighboring state, joined with me to introduce two weeks ago a modest bipartisan proposal to better enforce existing laws. It's called the Nick's Denial Act. It simply says that when someone who is a person prohibited goes in uh, to a federally licensed firearm dealer uh, and lies on their form, tries to buy a gun, and are denied that opportunity, that that should be reported to state and local law enforcement so they can take appropriate action. Mr. Brandon or Mr. Bowditch, can I just start by asking, it is a crime to try and buy a firearm if you're a person prohibited, if you're a convicted felon, adjudicated mentally ill, convicted to domestic violence. That's a crime, isn't it? Uh, Senator, yes, it is. We, we refer to it as lie and try. Mr. Bowditch. Yes, sir, it is. And the, and the Attorney General just came out with guidance where he is directing more efforts towards lie and buy uh, efforts. And if someone goes in and tries legally to buy a gun that they are denied the chance to get, isn't that a great predictor that they're about to go try and get a gun another way, whether through a straw purchaser, through theft, uh, through some other illegal means? Uh, Senator, in my experience, yes. Uh, often we come across cases where if the person's denied, and typically it's a younger female, and uh, offered some money that may be significant to that person who may be in a difficult situation and lies on the form and it's transferred over. I routinely get reports of um, us making arrests in those situations. So there were 120,000 cases in 2016 uh, of folks who were prohibited, who went in, who tried, who lied and tried. Um, that would seem to me to be an important priority. I'm pleased to hear that Attorney General Sessions is raising the profile of that. There were fewer than 32 cases even considered for federal prosecution. Um, and I think we ought to be providing greater resources to state and local law enforcement, to federal law enforcement, and pass this bill. It is a simple bipartisan bill. Let me ask a last question, if I might, Mr. Brandon. Um, requests by the FBI to recover an unlawful firearm um, are particularly dangerous because they require an ATF agent to confront a prohibited person who's now known to be armed. Uh, would you agree with me that in cases where there's a NICS failure or where someone who lies and tries and then goes and secures a firearm another way, these are particularly dangerous for ATF agents? Uh, yes, sir. Um, you, you, you never know what you're up against. Well, I'll just say this in conclusion. It seems to me um, that the voices of students from across my state, from Parkland and from all over our country, are asking us to find responsible ways to work together. Virtually every one of my colleagues uh, who I've been with today have introduced bills that would tackle this problem from a wide range of areas. This strikes me as one of a dozen, whether it's banning bump stocks, whether it's limiting magazines, uh, or whether it's making sure that the NICS system and background checks 
are made universal and effective. We should be doing this in the interests of our communities, our families, and our children. Thank you.